So Steve, who makes the Melbourne Cup? Who makes the Melbourne Cup? Well, it's complicated. I'm Ken and I make the Melbourne Cup. I'm Ian and I make the Melbourne Cup. I'm Amanda and I make the Melbourne Cup. My name's Joe and I make the Melbourne Cup. Miners, refiners, chemists, metal workers, jewellers. Us, project managers, our bosses, their bosses, the VRC, Victoria Racing Club. So yeah, dozens, probably dozens of people you need to make the Melbourne Cup. Why? Because it's hard. Most trophies these days are made by machines, but the Melbourne Cup is still pretty much made the same way it was a hundred years ago, by hand. The cup's made by hand, but it has to be made perfectly. Exactly the right weight, exactly the right dimensions, within a tenth of a millimetre. So there's a bit of pressure. <laughs> Um, there's the VRC, there's 150 years, over 150 years of tradition. There's over 200,000 dollars worth of And gold. there's millions of people watching. There's not just one Melbourne Cup either. There's actually 58 for the trainer, the jockey, the scrapper, the breeder, the starters and the Melbourne Cup tour. So yeah, just a bit of pressure. So, so where do you start? Where do you start? Well, first, you've got to get us some gold. So this is the Mount Rawdon gold mine near Bundaberg in Queensland. Uh, to make the Melbourne Cup, first our geologists map out where this gold is. Then we drill explosives down into the rock, and then everyone has to clear out of the pit. Then the blasting crew will go to the firing point and then initiate the blast. But today, Gemma's going to do it. basically got rubble. Diggers put the rubble in the trucks, the trucks carry it up the ramp, and then they put it in the crusher. The crusher gets the rocks down from this size to about this size. Then they go into the processing plant where tumblers full of these steel balls smash them into their powder, literally like talcum powder. So then the powder soaks in these big tanks that dissolve the rock and leave just the metals behind. The metals get melted and then poured into casts to make bars that we call Doré bars. They're ugly looking things, but they're worth millions of dollars. And that's it. Now Gemma will take those Doré bars back to Sydney and turn them into the Melbourne Cup. The Doré bars aren't much good to us yet because the gold in them is mixed with silver and other metals. So we have to refine them to separate out the gold. First it goes through a smelting process that purifies it some of the way and then it goes into a bath that purifies it again to 99.99%. Then you've got to test it. I'm for window and I test the gold to see how pure it is. And if it's not for nine, that's 99.99% pure, it has to be defined again. So we end up with 24 karat gold or 99.99% pure gold. But that's too soft to make a cup. So we have to add other metals, secret ingredients to make it 18 karat, and that's when it goes to bend. So I get these blocks of gold, and I have to roll them down into thin sheets. Sometimes, it can get a bit dicey because the biggest sheet needs to be 280 millimetres wide and our rollers are only 290 mils wide. So we've only got five millimetres clearance either side to get this $50,000 sheet through those rollers. When it's finished, I have to check it's all exactly perfect. So it comes together right for the silversmiths down the road. Yeah, it's 
spinning trophies is rare these days, and for good reason, it's difficult. There aren't many spinners left. So after all this work, mining, refining, rolling, it comes down to this one guy, the spinner. And his name is Sparrow. I'm Sparrow King. I've been spinning since before you were born, I reckon. 30, 40 years on and off. This is the hardest trophy I've had to spin. And the most important. It's a Melbourne Cup, mate. I don't want to bugger it up. <laughs> so there's a piece of wood called a chuck spinning on a lathe. And the sparrow's got to force sheets of gold to bend and take the shape of that chuck. The thing about spinning, mate, is the gull gets harder and harder and harder as you work it. You've got to keep the gull soft by annealing it. That's heating it up. Of course, if you don't anneal it, the metal will get hard and crack. If a sheet cracks, it's ruined. We have to melt it down and start over from scratch. You just bug it up, nearly 50 grams worth of gull. So have you ever cracked one? Yeah. <laughs> so once you've spun the cup, you're almost out of the woods. You need to make the handles, you need to polish it. Then you've got to do the engraving of the bowl and make the base. Now you've got all the pieces, and you've just got to put them together right. This is the first time I've assembled the cup myself. I think I did it right. <laughs> then the cup must be hand delivered to Melbourne to the VRC where Joe McGrath will inspect every inch of it while we wait outside and pray. If Joe gives us the all clear, we can celebrate. Congratulations everyone. I know it hasn't been easy, but it's been absolutely worth it. Look at that. You made the Melbourne Cup. Guys, we made the Melbourne Cup. How good is that? I gotta show you mum. Now the journey's not over because before Lexus Melbourne Cup Day, this cup will actually travel across the globe to communities far and wide, including Mount Rawdon. <laughs> Heavy, isn't it? Look, you could win this too. <laughs> we are so stoked and proud to be part of a company that has come together to make the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> Not much happens around here, so Melbourne Cup visiting. Holding in my hands, that's pretty special. I am Anita and I made the Melbourne Cup. My name's Steve and I made the Melbourne Cup. My name's Gemma and I made the Melbourne Cup. I'm Alex and I made the Melbourne uh -huh. Cup. All right, so that's one down, 58 to go.